What's up everyone, how's it going? This is Waj. Hope you guys are all doing well. And this is one that I've been working on for quite some time now. Now we do a lot of PC build guides and one of the options and questions we always get asked is which CPU cooler should I go with? Should I stick with the stock cooler? I'm gonna be doing some overclocking and which aftermarket solution should I get? Now in this video, we're gonna be doing a showdown between four specific coolers, two uh, water-cooled solutions, two air-cooled solutions, and at four different price range, anywhere between under $30 to upwards of uh, over $300 with a custom water cooling configuration. And we're gonna really determine the advantage that you get from each specific uh, aftermarket cooler and uh, how it compares to the stock AMD or stock Intel cooler. So if you're interested in seeing what the differences are between all these coolers, stay tuned and let's find out. Now the coolers that we've selected on the air cooling side are one, the Cooler Master Hyper T4 and the Noctua NH-D14. On the water cooling side, we have an all-in-one liquid cooling solution from NZXT, the Kraken X61. And a step beyond that is the Swiftex H320X2. This is the Prestige Triple Radiator configuration. Now just before we go on further and talk about the performance differences between all these coolers, we're going to briefly mention the description of what each cooler has to offer offer beginning with the stock Intel cooler. Now obviously the cooler isn't great but it's not too bad. It's nice that they throw it in for free and in terms of its main issues one it has a fairly small 90 millimeter fan that is fairly loud and has to run at a pretty high rpm to kind of get rid of uh, the heat that the heat sink is extracting and uh, the other issue is obviously with the heat sink. It has a fairly small area in terms of dissipating heat. It measures about 19 millimeters in terms of height and is about 87 millimeters in terms of its radius and it does have a copper core which does an okay job in terms of getting rid of most of the heat but once you start overclocking your Intel processor you're definitely going to need to get something a little bit better to get more overclocking headroom and to increase the lifespan of your processor. Now the uh, cooler of choice for just upgrading the stock cooler and if you don't want to spend a lot of money under $30 a great option is the Cooler Master Hyper T4. They've been making the Evo 212 for a number of years and this is is very similar to that cooler a little bit more competitively priced has a uh, four copper heat pipes which will do a better job in terms of extracting that heat compared to the stock intel cooler and it has almost two times the surface area of uh, the stock heat sink so it should do a much better job in terms of cooling your cpu and giving you better overclocking performance now a step up from the hyper t4 definitely has to be a cooler from noctua and either the d14 or d15 is a great option both are going to provide Provide you with plenty of heat dissipation and probably one of the best fans the industry has to offer with a super high air output and very quiet and efficient acoustics. Uh, pretty much if you want an air cooler and you want something uh, quiet, efficient, and well designed, uh, this is probably one of the best things that you can get right now. Now as an all-in-one water cooler, the NZXT Kraken X61 is an excellent choice. It's very similar to many of the other offerings from all the different manufacturers. It has a variable speed pump which does an excellent job in terms of moving a lot of liquid through the water block and to its uh, 200 millimeter radiator and in essence this is going to provide an excellent framework for all the different coolers in this category that are becoming very very popular and it's going to be really interesting to see how the uh, Kraken X61 is going to compare to this thing over here which is the Swiftec H320X2 uh, the prestige 360 millimeter radiator version so you have basically a system over here comprised of high-end water cooling components that are typically used for a custom loop configuration and SwiftTech is really a leader in this industry and this package is comprised of a lot of different things specifically it has the MCP 30 pump that's integrated with the SwiftTech reservoir which is all connected to the radiator and in terms of the water block we're using the Apogee LX2 which is comprised of a C110 a copper base plate now all in all the big difference between this SwiftTech configuration or any custom water cooling lube compared to a system like let's say the NZXT X61 is going to be the amount of uh, heat that you can dissipate. With the larger 360 millimeter radiator, you're going to have a more surface area for dissipating the heat. You're going to have a larger reservoir which again can hold more liquid. Having a more powerful pump will mean that you can pump out the heat quicker and of course having a better water block will mean that the things will work a lot more efficiently 
and quicker compared to an all-in-one solution that has many things crammed into it. Now our benchmarking rig is comprised of an Intel Core i7-6700K with an unlocked multiplier and a Z170 motherboard from EVGA. We also have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory from Corsair. Now we're going to be overclocking our Core i7-6700K to 4.8 gigahertz and the voltage will be set to about 1.35 volts and that's going to be tested throughout all of the different coolers. Now here's the goods over here at the idle overclock setting you're looking at a fairly consistent overall temperature readout a little bit uh, advantages on the higher end coolers certainly the intel and uh, cooler master hyper t4 are pretty much tied in terms of their idle cooling performance and the swift Tex and the noctua are kind of tied in terms of first place position now of course we're going to be more interested in the uh, load performance and after about 15 minutes of prime 95 100 percent load on our 6700k processor this is the maximum temperature readouts for each uh, cooler now on the intel side it's pretty much unstable 98 degrees c and if you go for longer i'm sure it'll probably uh crash the system and it's going to be unstable to run at these specific frequencies and at the voltage that we currently have so you can't really overclock uh, with the intel cooler on uh, this specific configuration on the other hand if you take a look at the hyper t4 you're looking around 89 degrees c which is a little bit on the hot side again uh, perhaps at this uh, current voltage setting we probably want to amp it down a little bit with that pacific cooler but with the noctua d14 it's definitely doing an excellent job 74 degrees c and same thing with the nzxt x61 at 71 degrees c and in terms of the swift tech results you're seeing an outstanding 67 degrees c in terms of its maximum thermal output so we could definitely push the voltage uh, beyond probably 1.4 even 1.4 five uh, volts to achieve a five gigahertz rating which i have done so higher end water cooling system you're definitely going to add uh, performance as well as probably prolong the lifespan of your processor now in terms of the noise output you're looking at the entire system noise output over here you can see that we have things broken down into two different categories one is the fan set to half power 7.5 volts the other set to full power at full 12 volts and at no surprise uh, the intel stock cooler is at the loudest at 65 decibels and the quietest one is the Noctua D14 at 35 decibels with full 12 volt load so definitely very impressive those Noctua fans are super quiet and very very efficient. Now as you saw from our performance results in pretty much every situation uh, really any aftermarket cooler is going to yield better overall overclocking performance and increase the lifespan of your processor compared to the stock cooler configuration and uh, things are going to inevitably come down to your budget and your specific needs how much you want to push your overclocking performance in the best case scenario uh, you probably really want to go with a water cooling solution a custom loop is ideal and if you want a really quiet and efficient system use the Noctua fans uh, as an air cooler the Noctua is fantastic but there's definitely some other alternatives that are, are sometimes a little bit more competitively priced but again you are paying for that engineering and that fan design is really quite industry leading but really other than that guys that's really it definitely let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below give us a thumbs up if you like this video helped you out in any way and we'll see you later thanks for watching and take care